Hello and welcome to part two of our tutorial on integrating Zoom with New Blue Captivate. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. In part one, we looked at the basics of setting up a simple meeting with just a couple of participants. In this part, I'm going to expand on a few points that will help you to get the most out of the conferencing tools in Captivate. And here's what we're going to look at. Getting the best quality output from Captivate back into Zoom, mix minus audio, using the Zoom monitor, creating meetings and authentication, and elevating attendees to panelist status in webinars. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about how you can get the best quality output from Captivate back into Zoom. And it's really very simple. The meeting host will need to have a paid Zoom account, which allows you to output in higher resolution. The free Zoom account offers a maximum resolution of 360p or 480p, depending on the number of participants, and that will have a significant negative impact on the crispness of graphics and text. Keep in mind that Zoom's pro account resolution is 720p, but if you have a business or enterprise plan, you can output in 1080p. And to save a bit of CPU processing, you could always make sure that your Captivate output is the same resolution as your Zoom output, but that's optional. And remember in part one, I showed you how you can use Spotlight for everyone to make sure that the Captivate output is pinned for all attendees. Well, you can find that option in the participants section in the Zoom workplace, or inside Captivate in the Zoom monitor. Mix minus audio sounds pretty far out, but it's actually quite simple to understand. And you don't need to do anything for it to work since Captivate takes care of it all under the hood. Basically, Mix minus allows panelists in a webinar to hear everything coming from the audio mix except their own voice. Because of the unavoidable latency introduced by sending audio from the person speaking into Zoom, then into Captivate, and then back into Zoom, if we didn't remove the speaker's voice from their mix, they'd hear a really, 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 really annoying, annoying echo. echo. Everyone else can hear them, of course, and all this is done automatically without any need for you to get involved in complicated audio routing. The Zoom monitor is, in effect, the Zoom workplace interface displayed within Captivate. If you're already familiar with the Zoom workplace, you'll recognize it immediately. It gives you access to pretty much everything you need in order to run your Zoom meeting or webinar. In the top right hand corner, you'll see that there are buttons that let you inspect the meeting details and copy the meeting link. You can also start and stop recording the full Zoom meeting. And one very important gotcha to be aware of is that you should always turn Zoom's cloud recording off before you join the meeting in Captivate and only turn it on again once Captivate is successfully capturing live video. And note that participants will receive a notification that recording is taking place. Now, this is a courtesy message, but it's very important that they acknowledge it, otherwise Zoom might not allow Captivate to access their video. Along the bottom, from left to right, you have host tools, participant tools, chat functions, basically everything you need to run your meeting inside Captivate, so you don't have to keep tabbing out to the Zoom workplace. Now, let's talk about best practice for creating meetings and authentication. Generally speaking, it's better to create your meeting or webinar in Zoom rather than from within Captivate, and then join the meeting using the conferencing tools. However, if this is a very basic meeting, for example, a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, or if you're the sole presenter and your audience is simply watching and not participating, then you're safe to create the meeting from within Captivate and you don't need to authenticate. But if you want to take advantage of the full Zoom experience inside of Captivate, then create the meeting from within the Zoom workplace and then you must authenticate your Zoom account. To authenticate your account, click on the Zoom account login button to be taken to a Zoom login page, and you'll remain authenticated until you click log out. When you're hosting a regular Zoom meeting, all attendees are automatically given the status of panelist. In other words, they can fully participate in the meeting and you can use their video in your Captivate production. However, when you create a Zoom webinar, you have to specify which attendees are panelists, otherwise with a large number taking part, there would be chaos. Through the Zoom monitor, you can easily elevate regular attendees to panelist status by clicking in participants and then elevate to panelists in the options. You can now use that participant's video feed in your production. 
Of course, all regular attendees can still ask questions, and these will show up in the chat controller, but you can only use video feeds from panellists. And then, if you want to shut them up, just click on Change Role to Attendee. I hope these tips and explanations will help you get the most out of using Zoom calls in your Captivate projects. Be sure to look out for the related tutorial, Prepping Graphics for Use with Teams and Zoom, and that's coming soon. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. Thanks for watching.